I'm sure we all have heard about dual channel in RAM and how everyone recommends using it. But I've always wondered if it makes that much of a difference and what I found is that there is a lot of misinformation about it and that it actually doesn't work like most of the people think. So let's go and figure it out, shall we? So let's start with a quick introduction to dual channel. In a computer, the CPU and RAM work closely together. As all the information the CPU works on has to go through the RAM, that means both parts need to have a high speed connection between them so the CPU can access that data as fast as possible. This connection between them is done through channels. Most computers have two channels available for use, even if they have more than two slots. So basically we can say we are using dual channel when there is RAM populating both channels and a couple of requirements are met. This will seem like it's faster than having all that data go through only one channel. Some will even say you will get double the speed, as we now have double the bandwidth for the information to move through. But the truth is far from that, as we will see in a moment with the benchmarks. I will use two memory kits for the testing, both of the same exact brand and specs as you can see here. I will use one 16GB module for the single channel and two 8GB ones for the dual channel system. Both configuration will be tested on my usual bench table with the specs listed above and with an RTX 3070. We start with Forza Horizon 5 running at the ultra quality preset. This test will show similar results to the rest with the dual channel configuration being a little bit faster than the system with only one module. The average and 1% values you see are the average across three different runs of the test and as you can see even in the runs themselves the differences are small but apparent, especially on the 1% lows where the dual channel configuration is clearly ahead. If we lower the quality to the lowest preset possible and generate a CPU bottleneck, we will see that the 1% low is similar, but in this case, the average frame rate also goes down to the same 8% difference that we have on the 1% value. So even with the bottleneck on the CPU, the differences in performance are not that big, not even reaching a 10% difference between the systems. Next in the list, we have Returnal. Here the situation is different, with the differences in FPS being even smaller than before, with the average frame rate being almost the same in both set of tests. The 1% meanwhile have a bigger difference, but not as much as we saw in the Forza Horizon ones. Same case with Cyberpunk 2077, where the differences again follow the same trend. Small difference in average frame rate, and a bigger difference when looking at the frame stability with the 1% lows. Really small improvements, if we keep in mind, we are almost doubling the data rate from 1 to 2 channels, at least in theory. With Metro Exodus we get an even clearer comparison. Here with the graphic settings at max the differences are almost non-existent, both runs being indistinguishable in terms of frame rate and system behavior. The differences in performance only become apparent when we shift the bottleneck to the CPU, with 10 frames of difference between the two systems, still not much when the values are on the hundreds. So this basically means that unless we are on a really CPU intensive game, we might not even see a difference when gaming. Finally we have Guardians of the Galaxy that accentuates the differences between the configurations. For this game, it seems like having dual channel helps a lot more than on the others, with the bigger differences from all the tests, more in line with what I was expecting before testing. So seeing now all the benchmarks together, we can see that the difference between having dual channel or not is really small. It's true that as we have seen in the videos, it will depend on the game we are playing, but still, I was expecting a lot more than a 4 and 6% difference, especially if we bear in mind how much people insist on it and recommend it. Maybe we can understand why this happens if we take a deep look into how dual channel works and what it does. At the beginning of the video, I made a quick explanation of what dual channel does, but let's go deeper into it so we can see why the gaming benchmarks are that close while we lay the ground to understand how it affects productivity. The first thing we need to understand is that adding bandwidth does not matter if we are not using it. It's like adding an extra lane to a highway only one car is using. This is the reason why when gaming we don't see much improvement, because in most games the CPU is not loaded much and the bottleneck is on the GPU as we could clearly see on Metro Exodus when running the test at maximum graphical settings. 
but on CPU hungry games like simulators, we might see a bigger improvement on performance when adding another channel, so why didn't I test those situations? Well, that is because there is another really important factor to RAM performance, that being the CPU itself, and that affects the results so much, it is pointless to test how it affects productivity. Let me show you why. First, we need to understand that the RAM bandwidth is extremely high, around 25 gigabytes per second per channel for DDR4 and 43 for DDR5. That means we can write and then read all the RAM content in less than a second if we have 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory, and that is using only one of the channels. But let's see if that translates to the real world. I did some tests and found out that actually it does not, and depending on what we are doing it can be really far from that number, as we can see here. But even still, those speeds are huge, so to actually use all of that we would need a CPU fast enough and with a memory controller that can also handle all that data, and of course, a task that would require to do that in the first place. So basically for general gaming it makes little difference, and for tasks that will take advantage of more bandwidth, the limiting factor will be on the CPU and not the RAM. That does not mean that adding more channels won't improve performance, but instead means that the performance gain will be different for every task and system we have. To prove that, I found these benchmarks from Puget Systems where they test different RAM configurations on Threadripper CPUs. These processors have a lot of cores and a beefy memory controller, so are basically CPUs prepared to do productivity tasks. Here you can see that depending on the test, the effect of RAM channels uh, changes dramatically and the differences and even the faster CPU changes arbitrarily for each test. So that is why I was telling you it was pointless, because each system and task will see a different effect on it. But again, adding more channels seems to always be the better option for those heavy tasks and it will almost always have a positive impact on the performance, especially for productivity it will help you get every drop of performance out of your CPU. So, do you need dual channel or is a single memory module enough? Well, it depends. As we've seen on the benchmarks, for gaming the advantage is not that big, so there are situations when prioritizing other things would make sense. For example, if you build a rig for gaming with 16GB of RAM, and plan to upgrade in the future, I would get a single stick so I can just slap a second identical one when I upgrade and use dual channel with them. Also, if you are on a budget or going for a simple build, then staying with a single stick could make sense, and then upgrade later if needed. I know it's possible to upgrade from two sticks, but putting four sticks can result in instability if the CPU cannot handle them. And also, that would still be dual channel and not quad channel as some people claim. On the other hand, if you want the maximum performance and plan to use CPU intensive games or tasks, then dual channel is a must, especially on higher end rigs where you have more money to spend on quality RAM and a good CPU to go with it. For productivity and heavy CPU work it's best to have high capacity RAM and to fill all the channels your platform has, especially for Threadripper or Xeon CPUs that can have up to 8 channels each, so for those, dual or more channels is the way to go. But if that is not your case, maybe considering to use single channel RAM could be worth it. This would be it for this video, thank you so much for watching and let me know in the comments what you think about dual channel and if this video helped you understand it better. You can also like and subscribe to support the channel, and I'll see you on the next video.